Good afternoon and thank you for joining this Wellington 18 minute short webinar, although timings may vary very slightly. But uh, my name's Baz Kinder and I'm the Commercial Director of Wellington and today I'm going to help demystify Microsoft Project because if you've ever searched for this online, you've probably come across around 5 million variants, which might be a slight exaggeration, but nevertheless, it can get a bit confusing, especially when some of the solutions have overlapping licensing and even have similar names. So the agenda for today is I peel back the curtains. I'm going to start with a very quick intro to Wellington before I then take you through a brief journey through the past, highlighting where Microsoft Project was born, before then providing a brief overview of the project solutions that are available today in Office 365 and also identifying which might be the best fit for you in your particular situation. So again, a bit about Wellington. We've been around since uh, 2001, starting as a pure project management consultancy firm based in Windsor. We've now got offices as well as the UK in Ireland and Spain. And over the last 20 or so years, we've managed to collect quite a few accreditations, as you can see on the screen. And uh, we also offer a wide variety of services that span consultancy, technology and training, with a real focus on helping our customers to work smarter. You can, of course, read more about Wellington at wellington.co.uk. So please do follow that link and take a look through the website. OK, so let's take a brief journey through time to understand where it all started. So the year is 1984, and that's when we first saw the T-800, got introduced to the Gremlins, and of course, we met Mr. Miyagi, and learn the ways of Miyagi-Do Karate and, of course, Cobra Kai. And if you haven't seen the uh, latest series on Netflix, do check it out. It's really, really good. Uh, although I do feel a bit old to be uh, watching that now. Anyways, uh, back in 1984, that's when version one of Microsoft Project was launched. And uh, this is what it looked like. Then fast forward to the year 2000, Microsoft launched what was the first enterprise project collaboration solution uh, which was Project Central. And fast forwarding to the modern day, took me ages to figure that out, but in any ways, that was a DeLorean zooming by. So fast forwarding to the modern day, we've now got multiple task and project management solutions available within Microsoft 365. And yes, it does get slightly confusing. And that's what I'm going to try and address now. So let's start with Project Standard. And this is the traditional desktop app, and it's designed for standalone project managers who aren't really going to be collaborating with others or publish their plans into an overarching portfolio view for others to see. And from my perspective, if you're an individual that's creating complex plans with various task dependencies and the plans primarily for your benefit, then Project Standard is probably the best choice for you. And for those that want to collaborate with others and publish their plans to SharePoint, Project Online, or even Project Server, you need to look at Project Professional, which provides all the capabilities that Project Standard does, but with the added benefit of being able to publish your plans and to access, for example, features like enterprise resource pools that are held in Project Online, meaning that you're getting better visibility of the resource availability and working in a more connected way. I mentioned Project Central earlier, which was again launched back in the year 2000 and uh, it allowed teams to collaborate and it also provided the ability for you to roll up the data. Well, it morphed into Project Server and Project Server was launched back in 2003. The latest version is currently Project Server 2021 and it's designed again for organizations that have perhaps not embraced Office 365 and uh, they want to remain on premise I'll cover the full breadth of the capability shortly, but in short, this is the official enterprise extension to Microsoft Project Professional Desktop, and it's built on SharePoint. Project Online is simply the cloud version of Project Server, and it's available natively within Office 365 and is built on SharePoint Online. So for users of SharePoint, this will look very familiar. And again, I'll be providing coverage of the functionality in the next few minutes. But whether you're using Project Server or Project Online, the experience for the most part is virtually identical. 
And uh, the interface to Project Server and Project Online is confusingly referred to as a Project Web App. And this is not a separate solution, but it is, again, only the interface into Project Online and Project Server. And due to the naming convention that Microsoft have adopted for the new project, which is Project for the Web, people quite rightly get confused between the two. But again, this is Project Web App. It's simply the interface into Project Server or Project Online. And hopefully that gives you some clarity and enables you to distinguish between the two. Next up, we've got Planner, which is a lightweight Kanban style board that's designed for teams to work together on relatively simple projects. For example, those that don't require task level dependencies or have the need to view the tasks on a Gantt chart. And importantly, one of the things that you can't do in Planner is roll up the data from across various plans into a single portfolio view. So if you need to do any of the above, you need to look at the new project, which is what I'm going to cover now. This is the latest and the greatest from Microsoft, which uh, really to some extent is a merger between Project Online and Project Planner in that it provides scheduling capabilities similar to traditional projects, but with a new slicker interface. The added bonus of Project for the Web is that it's built on the more modern Dataverse platform, the same as Dynamics 365, and it's designed to be extended using the Power Platform, which again is something that I'll be talking about shortly. But to summarize, both Project Online and Project for the Web, they're both, from my perspective, really great solutions for PMOs or any of the functions that want to manage uh, complex project portfolios. We've got lots of customers deploying both, although these days we tend to do more of Project for the Web. Uh, last up, though, we have Dynamics 365 Project Operations, which at its heart is really Project for the Web, but with tighter integration into Dynamics 365. So if you're tracking sales opportunities, for example, in Dynamics, which eventually become projects that then require delivery and invoicing, project operations would be a very good choice for that kind of scenario. Uh, but for the bulk of our client base, like I said before, we tend to focus on Project for the Web or Project Online which nicely takes me on to that solution. So again, we're talking about Project Online and here we have a very quick depiction of the Project Online ecosystem. So on one end, we've got project managers and planners that are using Project Professional. That's where they do the bulk of their scheduling activity. Then on a regular basis, they publish their plans to Project Online or Project Server if they're on premise. And once published, collaboration takes place through the Project Web App otherwise known as PWA interface, which acts as a centralized repository and provides a wealth of capability, as you can see on the slide that's on the screen. However, as robust and powerful as the solution is, Microsoft did announce back in 2018 that going forward, their focus is going to be very much on the new Project for the Web solution. That doesn't necessarily mean the Project Online is about to vanish. We are still implementing it within various organizations where it's the right fit. Uh, for example, where they are using Microsoft Project Desktop extensively to manage very large, complex, interconnected projects. Uh, but again, the caveat being that it is no longer being innovated on. But the solution that they are very much focusing on is the new project, which also does offer a number of other benefits. So those benefits really tend to include the fact that it's got access to the latest features and innovations. And even if you were to go to the Microsoft 365 roadmap portal and filter down by a project, you will see a quite a lengthy list of the new functionality that's about to land or even functionality that's already been delivered quite recently. Through Project for the Web, you also get a simpler user interface that for most user groups, including those that are uh, I guess belong to accidental or informal project manager types will be a lot more intuitive and easier to get to grips with. Project for the Web also offers really good integration with Microsoft 365 groups, making it much easier to collaborate and to set up these security bubbles that uh, you might already be doing. As I mentioned earlier, Project for the Web, it's designed to be extended with the Microsoft Power Platform. So think of it a bit like a Lego set, and this is really a bit of a mindset change from Microsoft. So rather than giving you a complete end-to-end -end solution, which might not really be the right fit for your organization, they're enabling us 
to create a complete PPM solution that provides a better fit to each one of our customers. So out of the box with project, you essentially get what are the green elements that you see highlighted. And that gives you the core capabilities of being able to create projects and tasks. And there's a bit more to it, but in a nutshell, that's the essence of Project for the Web. However, by using the power platform represented here by the purple elements, you get an idea of what can be added over and above that. And for example, we tend to provide the ability for you to be able to prioritize your projects. We give you access to a live portfolio view. We also give you the ability to add governance frameworks, raid logs, and much, much more. And uh, rather than having to design this uh, from the ground up every time we go in and implement, we give you this capability on day one. So by we, I'm talking about Wellington because we've created the Wellington Accelerator Plus Power App, which is used as the basis for all of our Project for the Web implementations. I'm not going to cover that in any detail now, but if you'd like to learn more, then please get in touch using the details coming up at the end. But for now, let's take a very quick look at the licensing. So the focus of this is going to be very much on Project for the Web and Project Online, which are really, again, the two primary Microsoft project offerings that we tend to support. The pricing that's displayed is directly from the Microsoft website, and it will vary if, for example, you've got a enterprise agreement in place, or whether you maybe have charitable status, or perhaps you belong to a public sector organization. But in terms of core licensing for either of those solutions, you need the relevant project plans. Plan one is primarily geared towards team members. Then we have plan three for project managers and those in related roles, such as program managers and PMOs. Uh, we also have project uh, plan five for power users, but this would only be needed in the context of Project Online, not really Project for the Web at this stage. Uh, before I move on to Power Apps, I do want to highlight that in terms of um, Project for the Web, anyone can have read-only access to the plans just by having a default Office 365 or M365 license. And if a team member simply wants to go in, view their assigned work, report back and progress against those tasks, they can do this again by only having a general Office 365 license. They don't need to have Project Plan 1. Uh, they would, however, need, in conjunction with that, a Power Up license if they want to go in and access things like raid logs and provide updates against those. So again, I've highlighted some of the Power Apps licensing. Most of our uh, clients can get away with the cheaper license, which is the per app plan, which is uh, advertised there at £3.80 a month. However, as we see organizations increasing adoption of Power Apps generally, most organizations are going down the route of licensing users to be able to access unlimited apps. So I'm not really going to get into the details of that, but besides that, you also then need your Power BI licensing. This is quite commonplace uh, for many organizations to have as a default. Uh, many might only have the free version, but as a minimum, you would need Power BI Pro. Let's move on now and talk about next steps. So I've talked about some of the solutions. I've not really gone into any detail or demonstrated anything today. So if you would like a demo, all you need to do is give me a shout via the details that are coming up shortly, and I would be more than happy to set up a demo. If you would like to have a bit more of a deep dive session to understand in detail what a implementation within your organization would look like based upon your requirements and your constraints, uh, we can run a envisioning workshop, also give you a implementation roadmap and a tailored proposal that outlines the cost and the effort involved. Um, so that's something we can also provide. And last but not least, if you would like to discuss anything else, anything at all in relation to any of our services, get in touch using these details. So you can drop me an email to baz.kinder at wellington.co.uk. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn by uh, either typing in that URL or doing a search for my name, or if you've got LinkedIn installed on your iPhone or Android device, all you need to do is open up LinkedIn and scan that QR code. It'll take you directly to my LinkedIn page. And whilst you're on LinkedIn, do you also give Wellington a follow. Uh, we do share lots of insights on the Wellington company page, so do give us a follow. And this webinar, alongside many others, do end up on our YouTube channel. So do head over to youtube.com forward slash Wellington PPM. And when you go there, do subscribe and uh, ding that notifications bell to be notified of any new videos that get published 
to the channel. Right, we're going to move on to Q&A now. 